Disney's next feature uh, was Pinocchio, and then slowly, uh, shortly thereafter, was the uh, very ambitious film Fantasia. Both were released in 1940, uh, and they both received favorable. They were very favorable, like favorable by critics, but failed at the box office, primarily because World War II was still happening, and they couldn't get a lot of foreign markets to play these films. Um, both, uh, even Snow White, um, to begin with, but then Pinocchio. Uh, these are these are very dark. I mean, and they're again they're based on fables, so you know it wasn't just you know some some brand new kind of um, script that was going on that was um, trying to like give you um, a sense of the world. These these are all based on kind of famous kind of fairy tales. Um, but uh, but Fantasia was it, if you ever seen Fantasia, it literally is a really fun acid trip without the acid. It's just it's a it's a magical musical, just log ride. I don't know how else to describe it. It's amazing, and it, it's a lot of that combination of what we were talking about before about kind of abstract filmmaking, and obviously animation. It was doing techniques that were partly pu inspired by um, the silhouette puppetry going on. Um, pure hand-drawn animation, um, obviously music, and uh, very much influenced how you know what was happening in the uh, in the, uh, the animation. Um, but again, it, it's just like these just, just these hits after hits. Really, I mean, whether they they were at the time recognized or it took a while to get to get them to be recognized. Uh, Disney was definitely carving out a very specific. Um, path for himself as like probably the most famous film studio already. Um, Dumbo came in in 1941, only 64 minutes long. Um, and the next film, Bambi, which came in 1942, uh, was not well received mainly because it was so dark. Uh, if you haven't seen Bambi, um, get a box of tissue and then go watch it. Um, and actually, it was very expensive to make too. So the film was 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 breaking new ground as far as animation go because it was doing techniques that hadn't been done before, as far as like the hand drawn stuff um, and the amount of layers of, of of just cells, you know, in, in, in the multiplane system that now he had invented. Um, but again, the story itself is a very dark story. But this actually stays in line now to still, still till today. Disney films and now Pixar films. I mean, if you look at Bambi, we're not that far off even now with, with the storytelling that, that comes out of these studios. Um, so American cell animation films dominated the world um, during this time in the 1920s um, and 30s, and especially Disney's work was the most one of the most popular and most well, you know, um, influential around the world. Um, studios from around the world could really they really can compete with American productions. Um, and many studios outside of the U.S. started to do a lot of their own techniques that were you know, um, we'll, we'll talk about some of that uh, in the next lecture, but uh, puppetry, again, um, um, stop motion, um, just non-traditional or what, what was now traditional cell animation, which was what was happening a lot in America, that again, that, that, that Disney basically um, really uh, made famous. Uh, so the 40s in America are considered the golden age of American animation. Disney continued their cartoon successes with adding um, Daisy Duck, uh, 1940, Chip and Dale, 43, 47, to the Mickey Mouse universe, while Warner Brothers are developing new characters to join their popular Merry Melodies, Looney Tunes cast, including Tweety, uh, 41 and 42, Yosemite Sam, 44, 45, uh, Marvin the Martian, 48, and Wild E. Coyote and the Roadrunner, 1949. Other new popular characters in the series were Terry Tunes' Mighty Mouse, came out in 40, ran 42 to 61, Heckle and Jekyll, 46, and Screen Gems um, um, cartoon, The Fox and the Crows, came out, uh, which ran 41 to 48. Walter Lance created Woody Woodpecker in 1940, and debuted, debuted in 1940. And in 1941, Tex Avery at MGM created the ever popular Droopy, the earliest animated um, American series, specifically uh, made for TV, came out in 1949. Uh, with the adventures of Pow Wow, and another one called Jim and Judy and Tele and Teleland, Teleland like Television Land. 
Um, most theatrical cartoons have been produced for non-specific audiences, but dynamic action and gags with funny, with, with funny animals would obviously naturally appeal to young people. But the cartoons often were violent and had a lot of sexual innuendos. Uh, they were obviously not meant for children. Um, soon cartoons became the norm for kids because it was a convenient time um, um, during the day, um, the, on weekdays, mornings, for cartoons to air because that's you know when they weren't airing um, newsreels and they weren't showing adult-oriented programming. Now, at this time, um, pretty much all of animation was done on the ones, which means for every single frame, there was an original drawing. Um, film works where there was about 24, sorry, film works specifically where there was 24 frames per second. So for every one second, there are 24 original drawings. This basically allows for the subtlety of movements, allows for the fluidity. I mean, this is what we, you know, why we love Disney, why we love most of our the cartoons we've ever, um, we've ever, we've ever, I guess, watched it and loved um, ever because there's, there's just like this, like, it just feels natural, you know. If you if you think about how people move, um, you don't think about it obviously, you know, in this um, uh, set of like you know precise actions. It just seems like it, it seems real, and that's what cartoons were trying to replicate was just you know real live action. Um, but now, um, but suddenly, television, especially kids' television, was very demanding. They wanted more shows, which everything meant which meant everything had to be kind of faster and cheaper to be made. So now they had to cut down on the amount of frames because, well, you know, who really cared? I mean, kids weren't really going to really care if there was perfectly seamless animation. They just, you know, it was just content. Give me content. So suddenly now animation was cut in half. It was done on the twos. So now for every um, one second of, 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 uh, of film, film time, you would do instead of 24 drawings, you would do 12. Right was cut in half, so twelve original drawings per second. So literally, production was cut in half. And to see an example of this, you can actually watch um, very early cartoons, um, like watch early Bugs Bunny, Wile E. Coyote, and then watch stuff like early Beavis and Butthead. You can see even already there, there's probably a jump even then um, between those two on how rough Mike Judge was making early Beavis because he didn't want to draw that many comics. Uh, that many frames per you know per per shot of animation. Um, another example is South Park, early South Park. I think those were done on the threes. Um, so for every you know one second, you would get a third of amount of drawings per one second. But it gives you that jitter, and sometimes it's a style. Sometimes it's just like a look. It's you know um, sometimes it's just because of cost. Um, so one of the people responsible for this new innovation and what was happening in animation, um, you know, basically making it still look beautiful, you know, just banging out, you know, just cartoons, um, you know, being kind of the head of how to direct um, the animators and still get out a look, but still make it fast and easy um, for production um, was Chuck Jones. Who is Chuck Jones? I'm gonna to end today's lecture with this little thing about Chuck Jones. It's a little long but please try to watch as much as you can. I think it's really amazing. While, watch, while, trying to, while watching this, pay attention to this. Not only the animation, but to the art, to the direction, to the comedy, to the overall just beauty. Um, animators are like, again, like great actors, specifically comedic actors. And Chuck Jones had a great sense of character, had a great sense of composition, um, and comedic timing. Um, he is you know, the perfect director of animation and inspired so, so, so many people. And um, he, I think, I think it's his famous line. He says, um, you know, he never considered him an art. He never considered himself as an artist. He said, um, the term artist is a gift you give someone. So I'm going to definitely say, Chuck Jones, you're an artist. I mean, you, there's no other way to put it. Um, you've done things in the world of animation that's just beyond animation. It's, it's literally on another level. And so many people, including myself, have been very much inspired by his art. So here's um, a really good bit on Chuck Jones.